Saxon Algebra 1 half lesson 49. Greetings students, happy 2021. I hope you had a good break and I hope your brain had a really good rest because I'm going to torture it some more. Um, no, not torture, we're gonna have fun. I even have a gift themed lesson to deliver to you. And it involves drawing pictures, so that's always fun. And we're gonna start by talking about three-dimensional objects. Now, we've already done that. We talked about volume. Um, if you imagine this is a box and you're trying to figure out um, how many cubic inches of Lucky Charms it would take to fill it up, we know how to do that. We know it's area of the base times the height. That's volume. But this isn't volume. What we wanna know now is how much wrapping paper would it take to cover the outside surfaces of this box. And let's just draw in this dimension so we can see it a little better, right? So you can imagine all three. Um, when you see the box like this, you realize there are six sides to it. Want the front, the back, the top, the bottom, and then the two little end sides. Now, when we're calculating surface area, we imagine that we're wrapping the box in wrapping paper and we wanna know how much it would take. But I also will caveat this by saying, it's magic wrapping paper, you guys. So you don't have to do any overlapping and there's no weird folding on the ends. It's just exactly the dimension of each face of the box. Now, when we're calculating surface area, there really isn't a um, clean formula that we use. It's a two-step process. First of all, we find the regular area of all the sides. And then we add, okay? So there isn't a formula per se. We're using the formulas we already know. Sometimes it gets a little hairy, but today our problems are gonna be quite easy. The first example uses a nice box like this. So I'm just gonna use that drawing. And the dimensions are given two, four, and three. And usually you have to take a second to think about what these numbers represent because there are three different dimensions and three numbers. Okay, so this is how tall the box is. This is the length of this part of the box. And then this is how deep the box is. All right, so the way that we do that is we have to imagine the sides that have matching areas. So I'm gonna start by calculating the area of the front and the back. Okay, so this is the front and this is the back, right? They're the big rectangles. Um, and I know that that is their rectangles, so their area, the formula rather for the area is gonna be length times width. So this first one is gonna be two times four and that's eight, so eight is the area of the front one, and then we need another one because we're doing the front and the back, right? So one for the front, one for the back. Okay, good. Now let's do the top and the bottom. Again, those shapes are rectangles, so it's gonna be length times width. You'll see in our next problem, they're not always rectangles. Now we're trying to find the dimensions of this. This length is four, this one is three. So this one is four times three. That is 12. And again, we have two of them because the top and the bottom are identical. All right, and then now we have these little sides. Okay, and there are two of those, so we'll write it down twice. This dimension is two and this dimension is three. And again, it's length times width, it's two times three. I'll write it down a little bit. Right, so now we have found the area of all of the sides. There are six sides, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. We add them all up. I see these make pairs of 20, so that's 40, plus 12 more is 52. And I look for my unit, it's meters. And surface area is always squared. Yay. Okay. This isn't a difficult process. It can get a little bit detailed if we have lots of sides and if they're different shapes. But by and large, this is a straightforward calculation.
The only other example for this lesson involves, oops, um, a triangle shape. If you've ever eaten a Toblerone candy, they come in triangular boxes. I also got a big calendar for Christmas that came in a triangular box and we talked about surface area as we were opening presents. And I was saying I should save it for my students and we decided that was a hassle. Okay, so I'm writing in the problems, or the numbers rather, on the diagram as provided in the book. I like to circle the numbers and then have the circle touch the actual line that it um, relates to, because I find the numbers can get really confusing. Okay, now this one is gonna have a front and a back, so let's see, I'll write that. Now this time, the front is not a square, it is a triangle. So that area is base times height divided by two. The base is three. I don't wanna squish myself, let's see. Three, the height is four divided by two. Okay, so I'm using a formula I already know to find the area of one of the faces. Um, the four and the two cancel to just be two. Three times two is six. And then I have that twice because it's the front and the back. And let me just kind of draw the dots in so you can imagine what that other side, right? It's this piece and then it's this right here. Those are both six square units. So now I've done that. Now we've got this back side and the bottom side and then this slopey side. Each of those is gonna be different. So I'm gonna do this back side first. Um, except I've already used the word back to describe that. So I just have to give it a name that makes sense to me. So I'm gonna call that the, um, the height. And that is not a scientific or math word, that's just my way of identifying this particular square. That is a rectangle, it's four by, let's see, this dimension I have to look, it's six. It's a rectangle, so it's length times width, it's four times six, and that is 24. Now I'm gonna do this bottom. Again, that is a rectangle, so it's length times width. And that is three times six. That's 18. And then the slopey side. And I'm gonna call that the slope. Again, slope is a word, I guess we haven't gotten to it yet. That's a math word, but I don't mean it in any kind of specific way. Um, I could call that the slide if I wanted, because it reminds me of a playground slide. Uh, I just have to find the length is five and the width is six. And again, I don't really care which word I put to that, right? Length times width, it doesn't really matter. I just know I need the two dimensions. We don't have to get caught up in the complexities of that. And now I add them together. Six and six is 12. Now I'm gonna combine this 12 with this 18 to get 30. And then here's 60 and 24 more, that's 84. And I look back to my problem to find the unit. It's centimeters. Oh, it's just a cute little thing. And it's squared. Surface area is always two dimensions because it's a sum of areas. And so that is the right answer. Okay, so that's our introduction to surface area. It's wrapping presents with magical wrapping paper so there's no overlap and finding out exactly what you would need to cover that shape. There isn't a specific formula, but this is the process that we use. There are some trickier versions of these problems, but for now, we're keeping it simple. All right, that's the end of lesson 49. Thank you, students.